officially. It is Discovery Monday. We have a new tool that we are gonna explore today. Let's be honest, I feel like it's gonna be easy to grasp, but also limited in my ability to understand what I can do in there. This thing is called Modify with the Y and I swapped. And it is a new type of visual creation tool. I don't really grasp what it's supposed to be for. It seems to be a mix in between Rive and Photoshop. You can create interactive animated things. The animated part being the most important sections. The interactive is a second secondary feature on that specific tool. It looks like a familiar environment. I think would be okay in there. That's why I'm, I'm saying it will be pretty easy to grasp. But then from the creations and the thing that people have done so far, there is like much animations done that I'm interested in there. There is once again, a lot of motion, a lot of interaction based things to be created. But you have something based in the AI um, realm, because obviously that's what everyone is talking about. If you have no understanding of what you can do, you can just ask or type what you want to do, and it will generate things for you without really having to do anything. That seems interesting. I don't know how much that is, but this landing page is overwhelming for me with, with the amount of features that you have. Let's log in and see what we have. I have an account there, but I have never used or created a project. We will have the exact experience as a newcomer, which is what I wanted to have compared to last two times where we had different things. Once again, exercise being really simple. When we arrive on the platform for the first time, what do we see? What can we do? What do we expect? All of that. We have the file section in the center with walkthrough templates and tutorials at the top, which is great. That is exactly what we were lacking in Rive. We have our files when we have files. On the left side, we have a big pink button to create a new project, which is the same thing as this recent project, your project, shared with me because it's the same thing as Figma. Once again, multi-cursor is a thing. And then we have prompts to get access to experimental features and the Discord documentation for getting started, which I think will be a cross cut of the tutorials. What's new when we have updates, get helps, and then some settings. Far good. Let's see a new project, how it is, what's the interface. First thing first, we have a prompt that tells us that the command K is to add modifier and generating images with AI and more. It's just a hotkey. We have the inspiration tab on the side and we have the beta thing that it's telling us that because it's a beta, we might find some bugs. That's good. That is great. I love that. I love that. Cool. We have the Canva, which I'm guessing is the layer list looking extremely close to Figma. Not going to say anything, but it is the same color, the same icon. It seems to be the same height of line for the elements. That is familiarity at its best. And then because we have the Canva that is selected right here, we have the inspector with uh, specific values available. Cool. Let's close that. If I click around, I'm losing my inspector. Click back. We're good. We have the notification. What's new type of thing? Cool. Export. Add. Going back to the projects. Click on that. Alignment is at the bottom, which we are usually seeing them at the top. That's pretty different. And then on the side, we have manipulate your design, import images, AI thing, those presets. I don't know what that is. Motion effects and then generate an image with AI documentation, things, whatever. I wish this could go back in, be retracted, but everything is here with the tutorials, with the preset and examples that you can load them, I'm guessing, and have a bit of a, an idea of things working, not working, all of that. I said the prompt was a salmon Mackie sushi type of thing in a broccoli suit because I saw an altar in a broccoli suit on TikTok earlier today. That's what my brain said. So if that's what we have, we have the prompt that is taking the, or the layer itself is taking the prompt. That's pretty nice. Let's see if we can split the layers. I know that we could have the foreground and background 
has a split thing. Let's see how that works. It is really high quality for what it is. I do like that. It's not really realistic when I'm looking at it. Like the broccoli itself is good. The salmon is great. The broccoli itself, also that's a really weird thing. I do understand. Now that we split it, also, I don't know why the sidebar disappeared, but whatever. We split the background and foreground thing. That's interesting. Adding the thing, added a modifier between the foreground and the background. It's modifying the background without touching the foreground because we splitted the, the layers. But if I'm moving the modifier on top of the salmon Mackie broccoli thing, we are getting the effect on everything, which is pretty nice to know. It's really fun to experiment with that. These, all right, I'm freaking out about the speed of the preview of the modifiers. These are great. Like the fact that I, I can just over the effect and have the entire thing done without really having to think about it. That's great. I wanted to add a bit of a bloom. And then if I put the bloom underneath the lens distortion like that, it's pretty cool. If I put the bloom on everything. Yeah, and this modifier placement is really interesting to me. Adding a motion effect will give me that oscillator thing. I could change that. Oh, it's even easier than what I thought it would be. We just have an oscillation motion. And then by clicking on one of the values, I'm getting directly the effect with the oscillation added to that, meaning that then it just gonna cycle through timeline. You can change the phase and can change the amount of cycles that I want. Right now I made the curve really slow. I don't like this thing at the bottom though. Let's let's be honest. The fact that the UI is moving in and out every time something change, making my initial canvas move in terms of visibility. If I had multiple motion effects and I wanted to check how they look, if I just disable one, add one, all of that, they might be annoying to have that bump. I wish that could be locked. I have a feeling that I've already seen most of the things that we can achieve with this tool, which is great because it's limiting, but also you just have to experiment and explore with it. Basically, once you have added your main image or generated your main image, you can then split it into multiple layers. Apparently, it just split it into two. I was hoping that it would split in just like three. The first one layer blurred here, the middle part and then the background. But apparently it just did a remove background around the main subject and then reintroduced the background. So I don't know how much splitting we can do. Maybe we can multiply, modify these things again, like splitting that these layers again, but I doubt that it would work. Anyways, you have these abilities to generate images and generate things, but you also have the ability to type what you want to do based on the filter and modifier that exists in the tool. And then the base thing that you really need to have an exploration with is testing out everything. <laughs> if you're here and you just want to see how a modifier will do something, you can just hover the modifier itself and get an effect with in no time to make sure that it's what you were supposed to get. I do like that. I don't like the interface jump like these are. I understand that it's in order to mask and simplify the UI to push you to use the command K rather than something else. But I wish it could stay up when you have something like when you have a time-based animation added to a layer or added to the composition that you are doing, having that fucking thing stable, non-moving would be great. The fact that the content in the center is just moving around, uh, it me off. I'm sure you could create really cool animations because all of the effects have a really easy way of playing with them. Like you can really animate them. I don't really see like, I guess that's my main thing. I don't really see use cases for a product designer like me. 
just it could be really easy to create something like a, an animated background or or transition in between screen like in between two stages of an app but other than that i don't really see use cases for us it's it's gonna be it's gonna take more time to integrate these and make them make sense compared to Fable, for example, or Rive that we were testing last week, because Rive can give you an idea of interactions. The use case for Rive is to create things that your dev would have a hard time to code the animation. So if your designer can create the animation in an implementable way in one click, that is better than having your dev spend like a week and a half on the transition. But here, because it's more or less a graphic design type of platform, I have a feeling that it would be easier to play with animated banners or posters, movie posters, things like this that could be pretty nice. This one basically took me 40 minutes to explore the UI, but now I feel like I have grasped everything and I don't, I'm not missing anything, mainly because it, it is a graphic design tool. Everything is the same as usual. It's just a matter of adding effects, adding layers, playing with them, adding animation to these layers. Going back to that overall UI, I have a feeling that it's missing something. I don't know what it is. I don't really know what is missing, what is feeling uncommon, unfamiliar for me to feel at home when I'm looking at this UI. Yeah, the background being a checkerboard with a checkerboard, the classic transparency play with the shadow behind the first Canva and that thing being floating, it feels like it's a 3D-ish environment when in reality it's not. Everything is floating, everything is going over everything or under everything. There is a transparency behind that window card thingy, same thing at the bottom. But then, once again, every time that you have something that is opening, it is pushing the content to keep the... that you're playing with in the center, opening up to here. So if it was just opening, there will be less movement are happening but i don't know that feels weird it feels like a mistake because the racks are not the same size except this one yeah really simple tool i have a yeah i have a hard time picturing myself use not using it but like picturing myself on a use case that is adaptable or good for us me product designer ui designer ux designer it could be really useful if you're someone who is building like a website hero animation and you want something that is repeating uh, a looping animation at the top that's about it for modify really simple app i do say myself anyways enjoy the rest of your day take care of yourself be kind to each other i'll see you tomorrow all that bye